and welcome back to Discrete Structures. I'm Mirkov. Today we'll be talking about sets and quantifiers. First, let's talk about sets. Sets are any group of things which contains elements which are unordered with no repeats. Sets are denoted by capital letters, and the elements in those sets are listed within curly braces. So V is A E I O U, it is the set of vowels. P is a set of pets. We can write a is an element of V, like so, and we can write G is not an element of V, like this. Operations can also be performed on sets. If we have a set A and a set B, the intersection of A and B is the elements which are in common between both. The union represents all elements with their, which are either in A or in B or in both. You will notice that the AND operator from logic and the OR operator are similar to the intersection and the union operator. And in fact, they both face downward or upward appropriately. We can take A minus B to represent all of the things that are within the set A that are not within the set B. Finally, we can say A is a subset of B, or A is a proper or a strict subset of B, using these symbols. Similarly, we can also say A is not a subset of B. Sometimes we may want to say something like, everything that is not in A. This is only defined when we have a universe of which we're talking about. For example, if A contains integers and we wanted all integers that are not in A, we can define the universe to be the set of all integers. Next, we will revisit De Morgan's Laws. I'm sure that you've all memorized it, however, this is how we phrase De Morgan's Laws when talking about sets instead of when we're talking about logic. Please take a moment and make sure that you understand De Morgan's Laws. You good? Okay, let's move on. By the way, we'll be using this bar over a letter to represent everything not in a set. Because this can be a little nuanced, let's look at some examples. Here we have a set A which contains 1, G, the set containing G, the set containing 5, 2, and the set B. And we have B which contains 1, the set containing G, and 2. Note that G is a member of A, the set containing G is a member of A, and the set containing 5 is a member of A, but the number 5 itself does not belong to A. Do note that B is a subset of A because all elements within B are contained within A. Similarly, the set containing B is a subset of A because B is contained within A. Also, B itself is an element of A. Do note that B is a subset of itself, but B can never be an element of itself. We have to be careful when defining sets so that they don't contain themselves. So now that we know all the things that we can do with sets, what are some common sets that we might see? The most common set is the empty set, denoted by this NOT symbol. The empty set is a subset of every other set. Next we'll discuss some common number sets, including the natural numbers, which start at zero and count up to infinity. The Z symbol represents all integers and represents all the natural numbers and all the numbers starting at negative 1 and going to negative infinity. Q represents all of the rational numbers. It includes all integers and all fractions. And finally, R represents all real numbers. It represents all numbers that are rational and all irrational numbers, including things like square root of 2, pi, e, and so forth. We can see by this graphic that each of these sets is a subset of some other set. We could say, for example, that all real numbers are just a subset of all complex numbers. However, we are not going to deal with those. When dealing with computers, we'll mostly be dealing with natural numbers, integers, or real numbers, depending. One question we might have about a set is how many elements belong to that set. This is defined as the cardinality of a set, and we draw it by two bars around it, just like an absolute value. We see that the cardinality of the empty set is 0, the cardinality of the vowel set is 5, and the cardinality of the integer set is sort of infinite, but we're going to kind of ignore that for right now. As we know, infinity is not a number, but for simplicity's sake, we'll say it's infinity for now. Finally, we may be interested in something called the power set. The power set is the set of all subsets of a set. For example, the power set of 1, 2 here not only contains the set itself, 1, 2, but also 1, 2, and the set of nothing. 
we can see that the cardinality of the power set of A is equal to 2 to the power of the cardinality of A. So we can see that there are two elements in our set of 1, 2, and the result is 2 to the 2 power, or 4 elements in the power set. Now that we've defined sets and various things that we can do with them, how can we relate this back to logic? Well, we can use what's called propositional logic. For each proposition, we can take arguments. So P takes an argument X, and the proposition is X is greater than 7. The truth value of this proposition depends on x. Similarly, we can say q of x such that x is less than x minus 1. You may note that q seems trivially false. We can make statements about the truth of these propositions using quantifiers. The two quantifiers are the universal quantifier, for all x, and the existential quantifier, there exists an x. Here we can see we have the proposition x is equal to y times 3 for some x and y, we can say, for all x, there exists a y such that r of xy is true. Note we have these symbols x and y belong to the integer set. If we were choosing x and y from a different set, this might not be the case. We can also negate quantifiers. Here we can see that q of x for x is less than x minus 1 seems trivially false. So we can make the statement, there does not exist an x, such that qx is true when x is chosen from integers. We can rephrase this by moving the negation inside one quantifier and reversing that quantifier. So there does not exist an x where this is true becomes, for all x, q is false. For another example, we can see that r of xy uh, is a statement we can make, and we can say, there does not exist an x such that for all y, r of xy is false. By moving this negation in one quantifier and reversing the existential quantifier to a universal quantifier, we get the next statement. Then, by moving it yet again in one quantifier, we reverse the universal quantifier into an existential quantifier, and then we negate a negation and cancel them out, giving us the final statement for all x, there exists a y such that r of xy is true. That's all for sets and for propositional logic. Here I've provided some practice problems. I feel like uh, you should get some practice simplifying some negation, so here is a statement that you can practice with. Please move the negations around to your heart content and try to get a simpler phrase that you can read and that makes sense to you. Next, get some practice drawing some integer, real number, and natural number symbols. They're basically just like any capital letter, but with an extra line. Consider the power set from earlier and what I was saying about how it has a power of two number of elements. Does this relate to binary in some way? And if so, can you figure out why it's similar? That's it. See you next time.